Rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Launch Model Steam Engine Part 15. Reassembling the Crosshead Guides. But before I do that, I've just had a quick look on the drawing, and I need to check that the columns are exactly as per drawing. Because when I put the cylinder block on top of these columns in the last episode, the cylinder block was very wobbly, and that's possibly how the lug got broken off. So before I attempt to fasten the cylinder block back onto the top of these columns, I'm going to make sure that they're all the correct length. The columns are supposed to be three and a quarter inches long. That's what the drawing says anyway, and that's not including the thread. It's vital that the three and a quarter inch dimension is the same on every one of these columns. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the columns using my piece of brass method to stop the pliers from marking them, and I'm going to refit the columns and make sure that at the top they are exactly three and a quarter inches from the base. And the number shall be three and a quarter, the number shall not be three, and the number shall definitely not be three and a half. When I first noticed the discrepancy in the length of the columns, I automatically presumed it was bad machining. Well, it's not. These are exactly the same length. When I take them off the base and measure them outside the engine, they measure three and a quarter inches. So how come, when the cylinder block is in place, it doesn't sit level on top of the columns? I was going to ask the viewers, but I know better than that now. I just don't want to rattle the cages of the experts. So I'll tell you what the problem is. The base slopes very slightly from left to right on this shot. So when I screw the column into the hole at the right hand side, it goes down a little bit lower. The one in the middle is just a rattle fit anyway. So what I'm going to do is refit these columns using Loctite 603 and set them precisely at the right level independently of the base. And we're really not talking a lot here, but it's enough to make the cylinder block wobble a little on top of the columns. And I would think that's how the lug on the other side got broken off. And if you think about it for long enough, it's quite obvious. The three columns are all at a different height, because the base is at a different height. So if you put the cylinder on top of these three columns, it's going to slope from left to right. And this in itself is not a major problem, it's only a very small amount. But when you tighten the cylinder block down onto these columns, then you have the problem. Now of course it's sitting perfectly level. But as I received the engine, it definitely was not. It was wobbling about, please see the last episode. So of course, when you tighten up the nuts on top of the two lugs on the other side, one of them is going to break off. Because cast iron is an amazing material, but being flexible and very bendy, it is not. Anyway, that situation is now repaired, so it's now on to the crosshead guides. If you watched the last episode, where I showed the crosshead guides as I first tried to assemble them, you could clearly see that once these small countersunk bolts were tightened, the crosshead guide on the left was not at 90 degrees to the motion bracket. So what I've done is held it in place in a vertical position and re-threaded the hole slightly. I don't know what threads these were, but they weren't very well threaded. The screws were a very tight fit in the hole. Maybe these small countersunk bolts had been cross-threaded at some time. These are 8BA bolts, very, very small indeed, and they will shear off quite easily if they're too tight in the hole. Or the worst case scenario is the screwdriver will just mash up the head of the screw. Many years ago, I bought a large tin of 8BA stainless steel countersunk bolts, and they proved to be very useful things over the years. Here they are on the left. Look at the difference between them and the mild steel ones on the right. And I don't just mean the fact that they're shinier than the ones on the right, they sit into the countersinks much better. And when the stainless steel bolts are fully tightened, the crosshead guide is at 90 degrees to the motion bracket. And on the subject of motion brackets, look at this one. This is the motion bracket for the engine. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit because it's a bit rough around the edges. I'll use a needle file and some sandpaper, then the polishing spindle, and then maybe some sandpaper. But finally, I'm going to finish it off with Scotch-Brite because I do not want a highly polished finish on this component. I tend to use Scotch-Brite rather a lot on the models that I make and the models that I repair because it gives a very good machine finish to the engine parts. It's not always good to have the parts highly polished. 
I'm removing these two very tiny grub screws from the motion bracket, and it really would help if I could actually see them. These days I have to wear one of these, not for social events or going to the pub, just for in the workshop. Finally, I removed the tiny grub screw. So I'm re-threading the hole 6BA to take a 6BA grub screw that I can tighten up with an Allen key. It's a far better idea. I definitely do not like cross-headed grub screws because I've seen so many of them that are broken. Quite a few years ago, I got a lot of 6BA grub screws, but I don't remember getting this many. I think they must be reproducing. They're very, very tiny, and if you drop these on the floor, you just never bother looking for them. Two of these Allen head grub screws will be more than adequate to hold the motion bracket in place. After cutting four of these stainless steel 8BA countersunk bolts to length, this clip shows me fastening the crosshead guides in place to the motion bracket with these bolts. And as you can clearly see in this clip, this crosshead guide is at a perfect 90 degrees to the motion bracket and both of the bolts are tight. And now all I have to do is exactly the same to the right hand crosshead guide. What a beautiful job! A perfect pair of crosshead guides, one upside down and one the right way up. Hmm. I think I'd better stick to painting. And with a wave of my magic wand, they're the right way around now, and in more ways than one. By making this mistake, I figured out that they were the wrong way around to start with. Initially, when I looked at this as a unit, the countersinks were on the wrong side at the top. So as I've reassembled these crosshead guides, I've actually turned them round because the countersunk on both sides at the bottom, and now the countersinks at the top are in the right place. When I offer up the connecting rods to the crosshead guides, as you can see here, they're in the correct position. So that's the crosshead guides and the motion bracket in place. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.